What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm redoing this products to take if you're trying to get bigger video because we've added uh, a few new products since the last upload. This is going to be a long video, uh, just to warn you guys, but I promise you'll learn something, so stick around till the end of the video if you're new to the Pro Hormone game or Designer Steroids, and if you're looking to uh, pick one that's going to help you get bigger. So I'll jump right into it. I'll try to go quick. Sorry if I uh, keep looking down. I got all my notes down here. No way I can remember all this stuff. All right, we're going to start with, I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. So, methyl stenbolone or M-Sten as it's known. Okay, let's see. It actually has a higher myotropic rating, myotropic, not tropic, myotropic rating meaning it's, myotropic means uh, the ability a product has to, or a compound, not a product, has to build muscle. Uh, it's affinity for building lean body mass. How good is it at building muscle? That's what it means. So it actually tops Super Draw in that respect, and I only mention Super Draw even though it's banned because I'm sure a lot of you guys remember Super Draw and have probably tried it or read about it. It was around for a while, and it was very, uh, very strong. Super Draw is a good product, but uh, Methyl Stimbalone is actually a little bit stronger uh, on the uh, steroid hierarchy, if you want to call it that. It is DHT based, so that means it's not going to aromatize into estrogen. So there's no need to take like a an AI while on while on cycle, and uh, you see, sorry, the, the leans are going to be really dry, and uh, you know, assuming your diet isn't ass, you know, it, you should have lean hard gains from it. You're not going to get uh, big time water bloat like some of the other uh, pro hormones out there. So that's that's also a good thing. I a lot of the DHT based pro hormones, in my opinion, are the best kind. And uh, we carry most of those, which is a direct result of, you know, what I like. I like to carry those because they, they cause the, the least amount of complications. They're the easiest to take. They're the easiest to uh, gauge how you're going to react to them. I think they're the best type. And that's just my opinion. Anyway, uh, right now, this is, methyl stimbolone is easily the most potent pro-hormone on the market. Uh, with the exit of Superdraw off the market, this is easily the strongest one out right now for building straight mass uh, but I'll get into why you don't want to just jump into it if you're new to these uh, if you've been lifting for a while if you're an experienced lifter this would be something that you can take but uh, you don't want to just jump into the the strongest steroid legal steroid you know pro hormone whatever you want to call it that is out there but I'll get into that here in a minute okay the next one is DMZ dimethazine Okay, this dimethazine is actually two super draw molecules that are bound together. Once you ingest it into your body, they separate and then they're metabolized. And for some reason, uh, I don't want to get too much into the science of it. That would take way too long. But most people seem to think because of the way it's broken down in your body, it kind of denigrates the, the myotropic rating. So essentially, that just means it's a little bit weaker than super draw was. But... Still an excellent mass builder, don't get me wrong. I don't want you to associate the word weak with dimethazine because that's not the case. It's still, I mean, it's a steroid and it's still strong and you're going to build mass on it. Uh, so don't think it's weak by any uh, stretch just compared to Superdraw or, or Stenbolone. Yeah, it's uh, weaker, but it's not weak. It's still a very powerful steroid. So don't, uh, shit, broke my pen. Don't get confused there. Let's see here. Okay, yeah, you want to use this before you use Sten, and and I'll keep going down the list. But you want to build your way up to the strongest one. You don't want to just jump into the uh, to the strongest thing you got, because then your body's gonna always have to uh, take more and more, and that's not what you want to do. Okay, Trin. We have two versions of Trin, and I'll explain in detail. There's the transdermal which is Trend D on the site, which we're actually out of stock right now. But uh, it's actually transdermal D-anilone, which is 
and it's a slightly weaker steroid than Trenbolone. It's not actually Trend, but most people on the market know it as Trend, so that's why it's marketed as such, but it's not actually Trenbolone. It's Dianolone, a slightly weaker steroid, okay, but very similar in its effects on the body, right? So that's the first version. The second one is the oral version, Trinovar, and it doesn't have any Anivar. I don't know. Uh, never mind, scratch that. Okay. This isn't an active steroid like the Deanalone. When you when you apply the uh, transdermal, it's already an active steroid. It just absorbs through your skin into the bloodstream. Active steroid, boom. There's no uh, there's no conversion. Okay, the Trinovar is a is it is actually a legit pro hormone. You take it and then it interacts with your enzymes, and then it's converted to Trenbolone. But this one, Trinovar is actually converted to actual Trenbolone. So. Uh, I'm sure most of you guys haven't taken trend. Maybe you have. I don't know. That's actually, I have no way of knowing that. But uh, yeah, this is gonna. They both have similar results. And the and the funny thing is, is uh, you know, in my experience with my different customers and rating their feedback between the transdermal Dianalone and the Trenovar, which breaks down into real Trenbolone once it's uh, converted, the uh, the effects were actually pretty close and very very similar. So it kind of comes down to your preference, because I, like I said, I looking at all the before and after pictures and uh, just talking with a bunch of guys that have used both. There's really not a huge difference uh, in strength gains and in and in mass gains. So honestly, uh, even though I, I mean, I know Dianalone and Trenbolone are not the same thing, and Dianalone is weaker, but uh, as far as as far as these two, the the effects are negligible or the differences are negligible, sorry. So take that for what it's worth, but uh, like I said, they're both great products, and they're both great. The, the, good, the good thing about these, I can't even talk. The good thing about these two, they're not methylated. I should have told you that. Okay, let's reverse real quick. Stenbolone and dimethazine are both methylated uh, compounds, which means they're methylated so they uh, can bypass the metabolism when they get metabolized so they're not broken down so they stay intact basically so they're passing through the liver but that puts stress on your liver which that can be uh, that can be countered with a good uh, organ shield or bodyguard as our product is but uh, you know you take that with it and that'll stave off any uh, excess stress on the liver keep your body healthy but that's that's what a methylated compound does it puts it's stressed it puts stress on the liver on the body but it keeps the compound intact, so it gets, uh, you know, you're taking five milligrams of a methylated compound, all five milligrams get into the bloodstream because it's methylated. That's your example there. But, okay, these two trend versions, the dosing's going to be a little different because they're not methylated. But the good thing about that is there's no excess stress on your liver, so they're good, they're, they're great products to, uh, to stack with methylated products because you're not adding any extra stress on your liver or on your body but you're still getting the benefits of uh, of the strength and the mass gains but of course that's for advanced lifters you don't want to start stacking trend and uh, stin or trend and DMZ or, or stacking anything I would if you're a beginner you want to start out with a single compound and as always you can get with me and uh, we can talk privately about what your experience is and what your goals are and all that uh, and we can decide from there what you should take, but uh, it would take too long to get into detail. I can do other videos on that, but uh, okay. Here's the last one here, Epistane. Epistane is a is a great product. It's methylated, but it's actually fairly mild compared to your DMZ and your Stin. You're not going to put on as much mass, but like I said with the DMZ, don't associate the word or don't think of it as weak. Don't think of Epistane as a weak steroid because it's not. And another point, epistane is, it's uh, it's legal, it's completely legal, but it is an active steroid. There's no conversion, it's not a pro-hormone, it's an active steroid, period. That's a, it's There's no conversion. It's, uh, but yeah, okay, it is methylated. It's another DHT derivative, so there's not going to be any estrogen-related issues, there's not going to be any aromatizing, there's not going to be any water bloat, assuming your diet is decent, halfway decent. And, uh, I mean, you're going to be... If you've never taken a, any type of product like this, any kind of anabolic compound, you're going to love Epistain. Trust me, you want to start with Epistain 
and you will not be disappointed. The strength gains are amazing on Epistain. The uh, like I said, there's no estrogen related issues, and it's mild on your on your liver, so it's really easy to take. It'll really easy. <laughs> I'm a tight issue. All my stuff is nice, all those things.